Hey guys, Michael B. The Game Genie here, and I just hit 2,500 subscribers on YouTube. I just want to take a minute and say thank you so much, everybody, for the support. It really means the world to me. I mean, I'm just doing this for fun and sharing my love of gaming, and thank you so much for everybody for wanting to watch my videos, subscribe, commenting, liking the videos, following me on Facebook, following me on Twitter, following me on Instagram. Seriously, guys, it means the world to me. Thank you so much for all your support. And today, as a way to say thank you, I'm going to share my top 10 games for, it's kind of funny seeing the season and all, one of my favorite Christmas gifts of all time, and one of my favorite systems of all time. The Super Nintendo! So alright guys, if you've seen one of my top 10 videos before, you know that these are the top 10 games that I have in my collection and I enjoy to play for that system. I only actually have about 115 Super Nintendo games, which is a very small portion of the total collection as I believe there's over 750 Super Nintendo games in total. So out of that 115, these are my top 10 games for that system that I enjoy to play the most. I hope you enjoy. Number 10. Super Punch Out! Right on! I know that Super Punch-Out isn't going to be on a lot of other people's top 10 lists, but this is my top 10 list, and I love Super Punch-Out. Super Punch-Out is a beautiful follow-up to the NES classic that recreates the original boxing game we all know and love. There are some significant changes as gone is the three-round format as well as the Super Punch stars. This has been replaced with a one-round fight where consecutive hits build up a Super Punch meter. I love this structure as it emphasizes sound gameplay fundamentals over lucky counterpunching, and there is a rush to get it done in one round, which keeps my blood pumping. I know a lot of people didn't like the new boxers in the game, but I actually didn't mind the goofy new faces, especially since they were so large and well drawn. In the end, it's Punch-Out with SNES graphics. Who could ask for more? Number 9. Contra 3, The Alien Wars. Konami is a company who certainly knew how to take their classic series into the 16-bit era. Contra 3 The Alien Wars took everything we loved about the classic Contra games and gave them a major advance graphically and supplemented that with some fantastic music that created an unreal atmosphere. Speaking of unreal atmosphere, you are thrust into a very cool post-apocalyptic world where the aliens have taken over and you are surrounded by constant carnage. 
Thankfully, we have the classic power-ups such as the Spread Shot and the new Screen Destroying Mega Bomb that will aid you in taking on the swarms of enemies and terrifying bosses. Being an early SNES game, they just had to use the Mode 7 graphics on the second stage. While it looks really cool, I do get motion sick at times. But overall, the graphical upgrades allowed some very cool decisions for level design and makes Contra 3 one of my favorite games in the series. Number 8 Super Mario Kart A lot of games on the Super Nintendo forced the use of the Mode 7 graphics, but Super Mario Kart mastered them. It was incredible to see the Mario worlds we knew and loved from the platforming games transformed into racing tracks. On top of that, you could choose from a host of characters from Mario's history, even Donkey Kong, but of course I always chose Mario. This was also one of the very first racing games I could remember that would allow you to pick up power-ups and weapons that made a decent racing game a great racing game, with all kinds of zany carnage happening. If anybody thinks that this game doesn't deserve to be on this list, think back to your youth with the Super Nintendo, and is there a game you and your friends played together more? Super Mario Kart was a great pick up and play game that brought friends and family together. Number 7 Donkey Kong Country This is the game that made Rare a household name. Donkey Kong Country was the first time we would take control of the iconic ape in a side-scrolling platformer. As we were introduced to the Kong family and the world in which they existed, it didn't take long to realize we were experiencing something very special. First things first, this game is simply beautiful. Breathtaking would be a better word as the jungle environment had never looked so lush and full. Simply put, graphically, this game is a work of art. On top of that, it features some of the most iconic and incredible music in video game history. I could listen to the soundtrack from Donkey Kong Country over and over again. The gameplay is perfect, it's very challenging with the one hit deaths, but the inclusion of a second character and rideable animals complement that perfectly. I really want to put this game higher on this list as it's one of my all time favorites, but then again, this is the SNES, and being at number 7 is like number 2 on almost any other system. Number 6 Heroes in a Half Shell, Turtle Power, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4, Turtles in Time. TMNT 4 Turtles in Time is the definitive Turtles video game experience. That's right, I'll say it, and I don't think many people will disagree. Turtles in Time is the closest you could get to having the arcade experience at home in the 16-bit era. The graphics were fantastic, perfectly capturing the look of the cartoon and featuring the familiar characters as well as some of the less known ones as well. The beat-em-up style combat was perfect in this game, especially grabbing and throwing the enemies at the screen which actually comes into play during a boss battle midway through the game. Being a Konami Super Nintendo game, you know the music is fantastic, and some of the tracks are my very favorite, not to mention they fit the action perfectly. In my opinion, Turtles in Time isn't only the best Turtles game, but the best beat-em-up on the system. 
Number five. Final Fantasy three, six, three in the U.S. The Super Nintendo was the home of RPGs in the 16-bit era, and my very favorite from this period is Final Fantasy III. This game was beautiful and epic and still stands strong as one of the best Final Fantasy games of all time. The amazing story of magic coming back to an industrial world was so epic and refreshing to the Final Fantasy series. The graphical style was a major upgrade to the series and truly made the game look and feel beautiful. The music of Final Fantasy III was memorable and some of my favorite in the series. The character development in the game was just amazing and for the first time I found myself rooting for the villain, Kefka. He was just so crazy and the perfect big bad for this game. While this may not be the role playing game most people expected to see in this list, in my opinion it's the very best on the Super Nintendo. Number 4 Super Castlevania 4 This Castlevania game in the series showed up very early in the life of the Super Nintendo. Super Castlevania 4 features the best graphics in the series, the best music in the series, and did I mention multi-directional whipping. While the game is in fact a reimagining of the original Castlevania, it is a completely different game, and that is actually a good thing. The world of Castlevania looks beautiful on the Super Nintendo as the characters and enemies are very well drawn, while the level design and backgrounds are memorable. Every Castlevania game has had great music, but there is just something more grandiose about this soundtrack that makes it stick out from the rest. The multi-directional whipping really adds an element to the combat that was missing and makes it much more enjoyable. But it still retains the classic Castlevania feel we all know and love. This game is yet again another masterpiece on the system by Konami. Number 3 Super Mario World It was billed as the biggest and best Mario game, and 20 years later, I still feel that statement is true. Super Mario World is my all-time favorite Mario game, featuring one of the most beautiful and alive worlds in the series. The classic Mario power-ups were back, with the addition of a flying cape that still to this day, I don't know how to really use. Did I also forget to mention that this game introduced Yoshi, the lovable, rideable dinosaur whose appetite added to the power-ups as well. The open world design really added an element of discovery as there were hidden exits to most worlds that allowed you to actually modify the level design of the stages going forward. The Bowser kids were back as the stage bosses, each in their own castle and both the levels and the boss fights themselves are epic and truly enjoyable. Super Mario World is a game that has aged tremendously and it's very hard to stop playing once you start. Number 2 The last Metroid is in captivity. The galaxy is at peace. 
Super Metroid. Right from the start, you were engrossed in the epic experience that is Super Metroid. I wasn't a fan of the original Metroid, but I found myself captivated by the atmosphere and story of this game. The atmosphere is the big one, and every element of this game builds upon it. For a game that has fantastic and memorable music, some of the most important parts are done with no music. The anticipation builds until the point where the music starts and the action begins. The graphics are sharp and feature some dark, ambient colors that truly build upon the experience. The exploration and discovery aspect of this game is truly rewarding, as every item you find will get you just that little bit further and entices you to play just a little bit longer every sitting. There is just no wasted element of design to this near-perfect game. Every aspect builds towards a fantastic experience. Number one, The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. How could I not choose A Link to the Past as my number one Super Nintendo game? Of every game I have ever played on the system, I have played and enjoyed this one the most. I will never forget playing it for the first time Christmas morning as a child, and just being overwhelmed walking out into the stormy night to start my epic journey. A Link to the Past took the top-down formula from the original game and perfected it. The graphical style was anime in nature, but kept the right amount of darkness to fit the dark storyline. The music was fantastic, and each track perfectly fit its setting. Not to mention the overworld Legend of Zelda theme is still my favorite to this day. I have always preferred the top-down format to The Legend of Zelda for the combat and exploration, and I think it's because this game is the benchmark for me. It's the Zelda game I compare every new game since it to. Of course it's number one on my Super Nintendo list. It is, after all, my favorite game of all time. So guys, those are my top 10 Super Nintendo games. I know this list is probably very, very different from what your list would be, and you know what? I encourage that. I love when people have different views of games. We can't all be the same, of course, but what I really want to know is what's your top 10 list? Feel free to leave a comment down below in the comment section. Tell me what your top 10 list is. Or if there's a specific game that you actually can't believe I put on my list, heck, tell me that too. Tell me whatever you want to tell me. I'm just interested to hear from you. Anyways, guys, thank you very much for watching. This is Michael B. The Game Genie. Thank you again for 2,500 subscribers. Thank you again for all the support. It truly means the world to me. Later. <laughs>